following, I've been talking about getting and claiming or overcoming your, your canon. And um, today I'm in chapter 3 and I'll read and then we'll continue. Chapter 3 verse 1 to verse number, the last verse number 17. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep, di keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourself for tomorrow. The Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priest, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exhort you in the eyes of all Israel, so they may know that I am with you, as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of Jordan's water, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God, this is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will suddenly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hevites, Perizzites, Gigasites, Amorites, Jebusites, and those sites that you have even in church this morning. See, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, Chose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the, as the priest who carried the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream, will be cut off and stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the ark of the covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at a flood stage or during harvest. Yet as soon as the priest who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zerathan. While the water flowing down to the Sea of Araba, that is the Dead Sea, which is completely cut off, so the people crossed over opposite Jerus Jericho. The priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground where all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed crossing on dry ground. Our Heavenly Father, all oh, that you would speak to us in a language that we can understand this morning. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name and everybody say, Amen. Amen. We may get seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's appreciate the worship team. Thank you. I don't know whether it's only me, but I find there are so many Jordans in my life. I, I don't know about you. To cross or mountains, to climb or problems, to overcome or situations, to walk through. And I can relate very well with the children of Israel as they got to Jordan. Remember, they are coming out from punishment and God wants them to enter into the promised land. Remember also that they had gone to Jordan before. But if, when they did get there, they got scared. And they went back. And God caused them to go round and round 
in the wilderness for 40 years. But they come to jo Jordan at a time when it is harvest time and the river is so wide. Actually, they say it could only be almost a kilometer wide. But of course, some of us that have gone to Jordan, we know it is not that um, wide. But when it rains, it, it can and it used to get that wide, very wide. So very scaring for the children of Israel to cross over. So there was an obstacle. To enter into the promised land, there was an obstacle that they needed to overcome. There is an obstacle that you and I, for you to get to your, Jer to your, to your Jericho, to get into your Canaan, to get into your promised land, there is issues and obstacles that you have to overcome. You will face some of these obstacles in life. And, but I know that God specializes in overcoming and overwhelming those situations as he leads us into victory. And therefore today I want to share about some strategies that worked for Israel over 3,000 years ago, which still works to us today. Getting past your Jordan. Getting past your Jordan. Uh, the map of Israel, you know, if you look at it, you, you will discover that... Uh, Oh, there you, there you go. Thank you. you. You will discover if you're in the Dead Sea, which is this lake over here, the, the other lake up there, the other lake, <laughs> what has fear? The other lake up there. But this down here is the Dead Sea. If you're coming from Egypt, you know you don't have to go past Edom and Moab. But remember, Rahab, as we looked at Rahab, Rahab is so excited when she saw the spies. She tells them what God had done with them. The, the, the kings on the other side, the Amorites, Edomites, they were overcome. And sometimes you wonder, why did they have to go past instead of going through um, on the other side, but they went past so that they can get over and cross on the other side. And I, many times when I look about, think about it, I see a God who wants to prove a point to his people. It is not easy, but you have a God that is powerful. It's not cheap, but God will give you victory. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to depend on him, not on yourself. So from that passage, I find Three things to consider. Three things that I know you and I ought to consider. Number one, we ought to consider the message. The message. What is the message? If you read verse 3 and 4, if you can have it back, or if at your own time, if you look at chapter 3, verse 1 to 13, you'll find the message. And they commanded the people, saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall re remove from your place and go after it. Verse number four. And there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 two cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know the way of, by which you must go. For you have not passed this way before. You know, it is like God is trying to tell you the problems that you are facing today, you have not seen it before. It is a new one. Maybe the color, it has painted itself a different color. And, and that problem, because you have never seen it, then what do you need? You need that God. You need to understand the message. And in the message, there are three things that I think are critical about the message. Number one, he is telling them to watch God. Watch him. He's telling them when these things happen, when the ark of the covenant, when there is some movement. You see, God will give you a message, but he also wants you to watch his doing. 
There must be something that God wants to do. And it is my business, therefore, to watch God. There is a problem, yes. God, where are you? There is a problem, yes. What do you want me to do? So there is a message of what God wants them to do, but also there is a, a watch needed from them. Watch. Notice that the Ark of the Covenant is mentioned some seven times in chapter 3. The Ark, you may remember, was that special piece of tabernacle furniture that symbolized the presence and power of God. When the Ark was in the Holy of Holies, the glory of God rested upon it. And it was the dwelling place of God. To Israel, it represented God. God's presence was there. So watch God's presence. You know, every time you think about the ark, and I've, I have had opportunities in the last couple, couple of days, uh, last week in particular, to stand in and look at that. And I told the people as I was wo worshipping them, uh, uh, pray, <laughs> praying with them, not worshipping them, praying with them, that when you think about the ark, you are talking about the presence of God. And in the ark of the covenant, there was the provision of God. In the ark of the covenant, there was the, the provision that God would provide. And the grace of God and the power of God and the victories were also in the ark of God. So when they carried it, they meant here we are. God is with us. Victory is ours. Provision is also ours. Watch God in every situation that you find. There is a valuable lesson in this passage for you and me. And you will do well when you face times of crisis, when you need direction in life to learn to be sensitive to the movement of God in and around us. It is a fact that God loves you. It is a fact that God will show you himself to you. But also it's good for you to know why things are happening. It is when, because if you don't watch, you might miss God. Somebody says, if you're not careful, you might be calling on the Holy Ghost and he has moved. So keep on watching the action. Keep on watching what God is doing. If you watch him, he will teach you how to live day by day. The second thing, follow God. There is a message, yes. But what is in the message? The message is, watch, follow God. When they saw the Ark of the Covenant move, they want to leave their place and go after it. When you see the Ark of the Lord, the movement of God, all what God wants you to do is to move from your place where you are and go after it. Pursue God. Not only were they to watch God, they were also to move when he did. Do you know sometimes when somebody says you can be on a dead horse and the dead horse has died and you're still beating it so that it can wake up and run. You need to be conscious. Your spirit ought to be alert so that you can know when whatever I'm doing is dead so that I can move on to what God wants me to do. I follow him. Again, the lesson of the believer here is it is not enough to know what God is doing. Hear this. There comes a time when you must leave your place and go after him. Maybe you did not get what I'm saying. There is a lesson here for a believer. It is not enough to know what God is doing. There comes a time when you must leave your place and go after him. Because sometimes you know God is good, God is doing this, God is doing that. But God wants you sometimes to pursue him. Pursue him. Leave your place and pursue him. This may require us to leave our comfort zone. Israel was about to follow the ark through a river that at that time was almost one mile wide. That couldn't have been easy, but it was still necessary and right. Brothers, some things will be difficult, but it will be right for us to do. So what do we need? We need to follow God. Because if we miss it, we'll be overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the flood. Number three, on the message, we have to honor God. We have to honor God. Notice that the Israelites are told to stay 3,000 3, feet behind the ark, or 2,000 cubic. This was so that they could not 
easily make a mess. Also, so that it will not scare them on what God is going to do. Because when they are that far, the priests are up there, they touch the waters, and there is some action, there is a heaping. You know, God is in the business of heaping. You know, some of us, our situation would need God to rise and heap it on one side. But it was so scaring, he heaped it very, very far. In for a place, actually, they call it Adam. Very, very far. Why? So that they don't see any scare. God loves you to that point. When he fights the battle for you, he makes sure that the devil, the enemy of your faith, is not near to scare you anymore. May the Lord come strong to you. May the Lord give you victory at a time like now. As you follow him, would you honor him? Honor him. Don't make him like you, you know. Niajepasi. Don't, don't you look at up and turn it, but I'm not watch a watch a cooker. You look at Kosu Mungu Heshi Mubana. See Murika. Hm? You know, if you don't honor God, see Kuta Kua Nashi Dota Muita Hata Kuitika. At Niajis are God. Honor him. <laughs> Honor him. Honor him. There is a lesson here for us. We must never be guilty of treating God like one of the pastors even. There must be always a reference and fear of the Lord in our hearts. God helps us that we never allow our spirit or familiarity to cheapen our walk with the Lord regardless of where we find ourselves God is still God simply put then about the message these three watching God following God honoring God are mostly easily accomplished by learning to walk in the spirit may you allow the spirit of the Lord to walk with you, to help you. The message, the message in, involved a command. Next to the people, the people are told, sanctify yourself. Sanctify yourself. This referred to being sure that they were clean and holy as possible, to be as clean and as holy as possible. They were to put away anything that was displeasing to the Lord. They were to examine themselves and get ready for the Lord to do something great for them. If you and I ever, ever expect to get past your Jordan that, are, is, that arises in our lives, we are going to have to learn this simple truth. Sanctify yourself. Sanctify yourself. Learn to sanctify yourself. To examine yourself. To be, to be holy for the Lord. He wants to use you. In the message, it also involved a commitment. This message to the Israelites reminded them that getting across the Jordan did not rest on their shoulders, but on the Lord's. Every time you have an, a, a Jordan to cross, no. Victory does not depend on you. It depends on God. Today's uh, newspaper, the front page, Kenya, on sale. Y you know, I bought it because I wanted to know who is buying this. <laughs> and I discovered Hey, now, how what Gazetu Now, a battle like that in the morning when I looked at it, the battle like that, to me. If we are going to win that Kenya that God wants, that from Kilimanjaro to the northern frontier, from Lake Victoria towards Mombasa, that land which is our land, 
It's only God who can do it. It's only God who can do it. And we can look to him, but we will have to sanctify ourselves and get committed to him because he's the one that is going to give us the power to overcome. It is not ours. It is the Lord. May I remind you that God has not changed one bit. If God, got, if God could be trust, trusted in those days to keep his pro promise, then he can still be trusted today. Often, we are unable to get past the obstacles in our lives because we live a life that exhibits a deep lack of faith in the promise of God. How do I know this? Because we worry, because we doubt, and those are the marks of believers. You talk to people and you will know worry is there, anxiety is there. I don't know how tomorrow will look like. I don't know what is going to happen. And remember what Matthew 6, 34 says. We should not worry about tomorrow. Matthew tells us not to worry even over material things. Yet, various, these are the things that we worry about. We worry over so many things. Yet the Lord tells us that all our worry is a sin. And that our duty is to trust him. The bottom line is this. Jesus is all powerful. He's all knowing. He's all present. He knows what you are going through. He knows everything there is to know about it. He even knows more about it than you do. Here is what he says in Romans 1.17. The just shall live by faith. Romans 14.23. Whatsoever is not of faith is of sin. Matthew 8.26. Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Little faith. So worry. All this remind us that he is the Lord and he is greater than any problem we have ever encountered or ever we will encounter. Now this is the message. That's the message. It is not just a message. In the message we are taught to watch. In the message we are taught to make sure that we follow. In the message we are taught to honor. In the message. In the message that we are, there is a command to sanctify ourselves. And in the message we are called for commitment. We are called for commitment. I pray that God is going to help us to commit ourselves to him. So that is the message for us to consider. Number two, there is a miracle to consider. We have to consider the miracle. But I love God. You know why I love him? Because if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God would solve it. So through it all, I have learned to trust in Jesus. That's the singer who sang that. Because how would you know that God can save you unless you are in sin and you have asked him to save you? How can you know that God can deliver until you find yourself in a quagmire and God delivers you from it? So there is a miracle to consider. And in the miracle to consider, I think there are three things that I think are critical for us. Number one, in in verse 15b, there was a problem. As I mentioned in the introduction, the children of Israel were facing a big problem. The river was over one mile wide and there were two million people who had to cross it. Two million people. You know, I get excited when people come to our church and they say, Hey, see how to Nuengi? Wamefika Gritano? That's what they normally think. Alafu naambia, wale wa maingia yu service ya piri, nendiyo inajaa inje na ndani ya whatever, hawajafika elfu moja. They say, apana. Say, apana. Tumeisabu. Sisi tumeisabu. Imagine two million. Kama hawa natutishaka tunafikiria ningiritano, million mbili. Think about it. Two million people. And you have to make them cross. No wonder the heap had to be very far. Ini watu wa siende wa kikuza guza maji. Sipa, ini maji. Oh, kumbe inakuwa ka hivye. God makes sure it is so far. So that this tokenge and everybody can cross over. So it was 
really there was no water anywhere in sight for them. How no at wengi sana. There was a problem in sight. Two million people who were to cross, and yet the Lord wanted them to go over. They couldn't build a bridge, no time to do so, because there was no uh, engineering battalion in the army. There were only stone throwers and shouters and worshippers. They couldn't transport everyone over in boats because there were no boats, no time to make boats. And there was no boat there. And they would not have to sit on ducks. There was only one way around their problem. And that is to go through it. Although I know people say this and it is also true that if there is a problem before you, you can go over it or you can go around it. But I think some of those problems, what God wants us to do is to go through it. Through it. Gonga na kitua. Ingia na motue. Just think about it. When you go around it, when you go over it, but when you go through it, there is a battle. It's not easy. And God wanted them to go through the river. In your Jordan, the Lord wants you to go through. And it doesn't matter how swollen it is, the Lord wants you to go through it. Have you ever looked at your Jordan and thought about how big it was? You know, and I normally say this to, to some of us. Five cents was big money. Because my father would give us five cents to go and change into five cents so that each one of us has a cent to go and give an offering. And if you sneaked the one cent you would still buy some sweet with the one cent. So what were we looking for? It was 10 cents. Because 10 cents was so powerful. When I used to sell pineapples, two were two for 10 cents. The one you buy 150. Two. So the song was, Gatururu, Gatururu, Mary, Ten. So you look forward for a 10 cents. 10 cents. <laughs> hey, I tell people that if you had one shilling, ay, si unaingia hoteli marakatha, na hiishi. You know, I remember one time we go to a mission with my friend, he's in the US now, and we are coming from Kitui. Actually, Kitui mission was so successful because I was in high school and yet I baptized people. Yeah. In a river called Kalundu. Yeah. We came home with a lot of victory. Now, don't ask me, did I have clothes to change? It didn't matter. It's not necessary. What is necessary is to do what the Lord has told you to do. Munataku batizwa. Munanguo. Hatuna. Ikujie ni hata mimi sina. So we, we arrived back in Machakos. I was, I was in Machakos Technical. So we arrived in Machakos. And there is this brother. I was informed for that time. There is this brother who was not working himself. And we had one shilling left. And I tell him, because brother you are not working, keep this shilling. And the brother tells me, no. You went to your keep this shilling. I said, no. Then we said, tukule ishe. I tell him, hey. Si kukule hiyo shilingi ilikuwa na shida. Hey, nilienda shule nimeshiba kabisa kwa sababu tulinyanyua. Tunaona bado inabaki. Mandazi, chapati, na ngombe. Najua kuna chakula ilitua ngombe. <laughs> ngombe ilikuwa nyamambiri, waru, na makavishi. You know. 
ukitisha ngombe kwa <laughs> tuzo very interesting ngombe ngombe nani ni pisi mbili za anyway why am i telling you this Maybe you looked at your problem and concluded there is no way around. There is no way through. There is no way over it. There is no way you can go past it. And I know a lot of us has been, we have been, Nikusema Atusemagi, like the ten spies. You know, we, we ridicule them, the ten spies. But the ten spies, all what they give was a report that was true. Actually, they were agreeing with God had told them. Because God had said the guys there are bigger, stronger than you. So the spies, all, all what they did was to repeat the same word God had said to those guys. Hey, ni wakubwa, ni warefu, wana vitu za vita. So they looked at the size of their problem, the ten spies, and they know that they cannot handle it. So they tell the people, we cannot. Joshua and Caleb says, we can. And he tells them, let's go right away. Because sometimes, brothers, let me tell you, when God moves, it is right away. Kaka kidogo. Kaka. Kwanza uliza watu. Dio utaona shida. Watu. Hey, si watu wako na advice. Atinasema unataka nini? Unataka kununua plot. Plot. Kwa unajua shida ya plot? Plot ukinunua, utatua mawe wapi? Si kwanza utafuta mawe, I mean, sisa nitatafuta mawe kwanza nitaiweka wapi, you know? So they confuse you. <laughs> I, 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 when, when I started building, where I was building in Kawasukari, I had a lot of faith. And you believe me, it was a lot of faith. Mipo jenga, nikaweka mbao, siku wana matofari. Wacha madirisha matufari. Nambao ni ene mewambua na dua. Nikaenda hapa waren. Kambia muindi nataka matufari ya kurufu nyumba. Kanambia wapi pesa. Nikaambia nitalipa. Kwanza akakata. Aliniangalia. Unajua vile unaweza angalia mtu kichwa chini. Kwanza niko na Volkswagen. Kichwa chini. Na kagali kanaria totototototo hapo inji. But you know, after prayer, I went back. He gave me all the tiles I wanted. So I roofed. But there are no windows still. So people used to bless me. Nakuta kuna mtu wa smiti, mwigina mweka mchanga, you know. But the point that I want to bring to you is that if you talk to people, one man told me, ni meambiwa kujenga nyumba ni very expensive. Na mimi namwambia kujenga nyumba ni very rahisi sana. Kile unataka chimba mitaro. Alafu weka mawe huko kwa hiyo mitaro foundation. Alafu koroga slab. Alafu nunua mawe ya kujenga juu. Yaani do wacha kujenga nyumba iishe. Ati umeweka tiles, umeweka milango, umeweka madirisha, haitajengeka as the people who have built. Hakuna nyumba ujengwa hivyo. Uliza daktari, inajengagwa hivyo na chimba mitaro unaweka foundation. Kwa hivyo all what you need first, uko na plot eh chimba mitaro. Bishop ni pesa ya ya kuweka ma sasa you you start worrying so much and you will not move. And those are the problems and challenges that all of us face. But if we have faith and that is important for us because if you're going to consider the miracle, we have to see God in that way in this problem. What is God trying to tell us? God looks at the problem and he says, follow me, I have a plan. So the second point is, there was a plan. In the same verse, the plan was this, God said, when the feet of the priest enter Jordan, I'm going to part the waters and lead you through on the dry ground. That is, hey, maji, eh, wakiguza maji, tu. Sasa, Maji inaweza beba mtu. Maji inaweza beba mtu. To take, uh, he is commanding them. You don't worry. I have a plan for you. God has a plan for you and has a plan for us. There, were, there was a catch in this plan. And it was that the waters would not part until the priests who were carrying the ark 
stepped into the water. Then I want to tell someone here. You have been afraid of many things. Like even building. Ask the people that have built. It is the one step at a time. Start with one thing. I normally tell people who say, Sina fisi ya kwenda shule. Enda ulipe hiyo ukonayo. Na mungu na principle uwa ukiwasikiza. Kama mungu wajasema, enderea kusoma. Kama principle wajasema, enderea kusoma. Sasa unaanza kusoma, na haki nifukuza, we enderea kusoma. Kwani? And there are people in this church who have gone to college and finished college. It was one time, kido kidogo tu, kwanza ukitisha principle na giritano, mtoto warafanya mutihani. I know you have heard me say this. One time I had three people in the university. Three. Parallel water. <laughs> and uh, every time the week before, the week before they opened, my wife, my daughter, and my son would sit before we pray. I asked them, Shidayako? Yen urataka pesa gapi? They, they used to wonder, am I crazy? Because after they tell me that and I pray for them, that night I sleep like a baby. Na lala ile akukapasua mbao. Ile akukapasua mbao. Ile unapasua mbao baka wanashindwa. Did you hear what we said? Because they know I don't. But you know what? When I wake up, God gives me an idea. God gives me people who can lend me. Ile ni pesasa. Mdogo mdogo. Yeah. Na wakamaliza shule. But if you look at me, see, you tell them, ni tajiri, anasomajwa watu wangabi? Ni hiyo tu. The story is the same. But some of you know, because we talked with each other. Do you get, uh, one, one time I, I borrowed from somewhere, and I was with my son. Hata tuliretoa, nikuwa na ye. Giri miyamoja. Kapewa, miyamoja. Nikampa. Beba. Hey, na ilikuwa nyingi ya lipa, hata ya lipo yangalia ilikuwa nyingi. Na mbea, beba, tuende. Hururururu, nakuru, lipa nusu, shule, nusu. Si yote, lipa nusu. Hururururu, eldoret, ingia duka. Nunua hii, nunua hii, nunua hii, nunua hii. Nika muuliza, umebakisha nga hapi sasa? Akarambia hata nina shindu wa daddy, how do you survive? The point that I'm bringing is, God has a plan. When your feet touches the waters, the miracle will not happen before. You know some of us want the miracle to happen before? But the miracle will not happen before. The miracle will happen as you walk two words. As you walk two words. The, the men with the leprosy, as they walk two words, then God has, is able to scare the army. There was a plan. What a lesson for you and me. Too often we want the Lord just to fix everything in our lives for us so that we walk when it is done. But God wants us to go mdogo mdogo. There is, and thirdly, there is a performance. There is something that I ought to do. When the priest stepped into that raging river, it parted and God opened a path of dry ground through the waters for his people. By the way, verse 16 says that the waters backed up to the city of Adam. This is up some 20 miles north. 20 miles. Yani, may God do that for me. May 20 miles from where I am, that which scares me be held. 20 miles. So that even by the time it heaps itself and overflows, 2 million people have crossed over the Jordan. There is a miracle for me and there is a miracle for you. Our God was able all the way through the Bible to do much more. And he is still able today, regardless of my situation, my circumstance, God is still the one who says, I can. Notice the question that plagued the Jews. Psalm 78, verse 19 and 20. They asked, yes. They spoke against God. They said, can God Furnish a table in the wilderness. But you know what? The answer is still there. Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the stream overflowing. Can he give bread also 
Yes, God provided fresh for his people. Now that is a miracle. In the wilderness. Oh my goodness. If, you, if, if God will give you an opportunity to go to Israel, that place, especially the wilderness from Egypt, ni kavu kabisa. Atamaji. But he, they had water. They had provision. That is our God. There is a miracle that God wants to do for us, but I have to believe in him. Our God specializes in cutting problems down to size. When little David walked out into the valley to face Goliath, he faced an opponent that he would never have defeated on his own. Because the giant, and I want you to hear this, the giant was 10 feet tall. He went into that valley with a sling, five smooth stones, and fade in the power of God. When David cast the stone at Goliath, the giant fell to the earth, and David ran to Goliath. He drew Goliath's sword and took off the giant's head. Now I want you to know what happened. The giant was still there, but the giant that was 10 feet tall was only 10 feet long. Did you get it? That giant that is 10 feet tall, if you have faith in God, that giant will be only 10 feet long because I'm a lalachini. If you get it, receive it. Because that is what God wants to do for you. It looks big. But may God give you the grace and the faith to overcome. There was a problem, yes, but God has a plan, yes, and there is a performance for us. Finally, there is a memorial to consider. Memorial to consider. When all the people had crossed over Jordan, Joshua commanded one man from each of the twelve tribes to get a rock from the midst of Jordan and build a memorial on the Canaan side. That memorial is worth taking a look at today. First, the purpose of the memorial. What was the purpose? We need to erect some memorials in our lives as well. We must use caution because we do not want to emblame the past and by doing so cripple the future. And many churches have done that and are suffering as a result. What we do, what we do, what we do, is to remember the things the Lord has done for us so that we can tell others about them. We want to remember the great works of our God so that we can pass that way again. And if we did, we'll remember that the Lord was faithful in that day, that he will be faithful also in this day as well. Memorials are good. Put a memorial somewhere. Never forget what the Lord has done for you in your yesterdays. Because it is in those yesterday's experiences that will push you over when the trials of today come and the trials of tomorrow arise in your life. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passes through the valley of Baca, make it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. That person who remembers the miracles that God has done helps us. So I normally say, God help me to always remember. And I like the people who remind me. Where's you? I like that. Because it tells me that God is able to transform me. The other day I met somebody who said, And by the way, we used to say, Australia, 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 Australia. Because we don't want people, Australia, 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 Australia. And then you say, yes, I'm the same person. Oh, you're newe. Asha, tiwe. You know. May God do that to you. May people look at you and ask, is this the same one? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. But God has transformed my life. I'm different in the name of the Lord. We have many of this moment God is giving us so that we can have memorial. Two, what is the picture in the memorial? It is interesting to note that Joshua constructed two monuments. Two. 
They build the one on the bank and one in the middle of the river. Whew. The first picture is of the faithfulness of God. So the first memorial they build is to declare the faithfulness of God. And that is built not in the river, but on the banks of Jordan. But as, this, as, as the priests hold the ark and people have all passed, then they build another one in the midst of the river, which is covered by the waters after water has been released. What was this? First it was to remind others what the Lord had done and what he could do. But again, we see there is something else that God does but he doesn't want people to see it. It is covered. A picture of the faith of the people of God. The pile in the river, no one could see it but God. It stood as a monument to the faith of the people. Yes, when you face a time of trials, others are often guilty of misjudging your motives and actions. But only God knows the truth about your heart. Yani wengine, uyu nae ni kiberebere, uyu nae ni kinyumanyuma, uyu siji nae ni fikiria na mnagani, anaona ni etu, kwa ni mungu ni utu. Yani, they will judge you. But build a memorial still. Let it be covered by everything. Go ahead and do what God is calling you to do. Why did he do this? It was a memorial. It was a reminder that no matter how great the obstacle is, it is nothing when it is placed alongside the God of heaven. Every obstacle. Some of you, and myself included, are facing troubled waters today. And I want you to know you can cross over. So I invite you to come before the Lord today. Tell him about the Jordan you are facing. Don't allow to be intimidated by anybody. Mention it. There is a place of victory where you can shout in spite of your troubles. But the first step in getting there is dealing with what is keeping you out. Your Jordan. It may be seen. It may be some person that you are carrying. It may be some trials. But whatever it is, God is greater than it is. We need to tell God about our Jordan. I want to invite you. Let's all stand and tell God about our Jordan. You know your Jordan is not like mine. Your Jordan is your Jordan. But you can tell God about your Jordan. What it is. Tell God about your obstacle. I want you to open up your mouth. You know, just tell God. And don't worry. To, you know, the advantage is the mask. Hata ukiogea jirani yako anaweza kuwa ashiki. Kwa sababu inakuwa ni kama hiyo uko dani. But tell God about my obstacle. What is your obstacle? What is your obstacle? Is it relationship? Is it sickness? Is it sin? What is your obstacle? What is that thing that you want God to deliver you from? Just open up your mouth. I want to give you a minute to do so in the name of the Lord. Just open your mouth before the Lord. Yes, my father. Shakarabab. Hallelujah. 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 Maybe you're here and my brother, my sister, you even don't know the Lord we are talking about. You're still wondering, is there a God? 
you are still overwhelmed like the children of Israel. You have walked the wilderness 40 years, 20 years, 15 years, or whatever years that is. But today you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can watch him, so that you can follow him, so that you can honor him as he takes you through your Jordan. If you're here and you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, would you lift up your hand and I will see it and I want to pray for you right now, wherever you are, with our mask on still. If you're here, you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're saying, yes, here I am. I want to give my life to Jesus. Is there anyone? Is there anyone? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for ministering to us. We are going to cross our Jordan. And this week, Heavenly Father, we want to declare there are some men and women in this congregation today that September, this month, as it ends, they are closing over their Jordan. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord praise.